Join Kids Hat Family. Tia, that monkey over there tried to imitate me. <laughs> oh, really? Tia, why are you laughing? Wait, I'll tell you why monkeys do this. The monkeys and the cap seller. Once, a cap seller was going to sell his caps in a village market. Caps, 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 5 rupees caps, 10 rupees caps, caps, caps. He was going through a forest. He was carrying a basket of red caps on his head. He got tired in the heat of the sun and thought of lying down under a tree for some time. He put his basket on the ground. <sighs> I am so tired. Let me take a small nap. There were monkeys on that tree. They came down <laughs> and one by one took all the caps from the cap seller's basket. Then they climbed on the tree. When the cap seller woke up, he was shocked to see his basket empty. He searched for his caps everywhere. To his surprise, he saw the monkeys were wearing them. He found that the monkeys were imitating him. So he started throwing his cap down and the monkeys did so. The cap seller collected all the caps, put them back in his basket and went away happily. So Tofu, we should deal with cleverness in such situations because wisdom helps during difficult times. I understand. Hey Tia, you know my friend Jim who is a year senior in school? Yes, I do. I think he's being very bossy these days. Really? What happened? Well, he thinks that our maths teacher will give us a surprise test towards the end of the month. Why does he think so? Because she gave his class a surprise test too around the same time of the year. Okay, so what's the problem? It's a surprise test, dear. How can he know when she will give it? And he keeps telling me to study for it. Well, He's advising you from his experience. Let me tell you a story to help you understand. 
The Musical Donkey Once upon a time, a potter had a donkey. The potter was very poor, so he didn't have enough to feed the donkey. Hence, the donkey was very thin. One night, the donkey was hungry even after his dinner. So he wandered in search of food and reached a nearby field and ate the crops. This went on for a few nights. Till one night, he met a jackal. Hello there. Hello. Is the crop here any good? Yes, it is. Besides, it is a lot more than what my owner gives me, so I can't complain. Would you like to have some cucumbers? Yes, yes, I would love to. I love cool juicy cucumbers. Okay, come. Follow me then, my friend. The jackal took the donkey to a nearby field that had cucumbers growing in it. And they both ate their tummy full. From that night, the donkey and the jackal met every night and enjoyed the delicious cucumbers in the field. One night, after a hearty meal, the donkey said he wanted to sing. I feel like singing tonight. No, 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 my friend. You must not sing. But the donkey ignored the jackal's wise advice and started singing. Hearing a donkey bray in the field alerted the farmers. They came rushing to the field with their sticks. The wise jackal knew what would happen next and jumped over the fence for his safety. But the donkey kept singing till the farmers found him. Once they did, they beat him up and chased him out of there. So you see Tofu, sometimes a wise advice is not to be ignored. Otherwise you will get chased out of a field or fail a maths test. <laughs> yes Tofu, you are right. I think I owe Jim an apology and need to start studying. I agree. colors you just bought? I need to draw and color a bird for my science assignment. Sure Tofu, here you go. Thanks Tia. Hey Tofu, I am very hungry. Can I have one of the chocolates you bought at the store? Actually, Tia, I bought them for myself. Can't you wait till dinner? Tofu, you're so selfish. 
You're like the selfish giant. N no, I'm not. Yes, you are. Let me tell you about him and then you can decide. The Selfish Giant Once upon a time, there was a beautiful garden. It had big trees laden with fruits and many flowers of different colors and fragrances. The grass was so soft that it felt like a cozy bed. Different birds sang melodies in the garden the whole day long. The children of the village loved playing in the garden. They would come there as soon as school got over and would stay till evening. In the far end of the garden was a big castle. People often said that the giant who owned the garden used to live there. But it was empty now. Nobody knew what had happened to the giant and they thought he would never return. Till one day, the earth shook and there were loud thumping sounds. With each thump, the children were lifted off the ground and back again. Oh no! It is the giant! It cannot be. Why has he returned after all these years? The giant saw all the children in his garden and yelled loudly. What are these children doing here? This is my garden. Get out! Get out of here! All the children got scared and ran away. The giant then built a large wall around the garden so that no one could ever enter it. The next day, the giant went to the garden thinking that he will pluck some fruits and flowers. But the trees were so sad without the children that they shed all their leaves and fruits and lay bare. Even the flowers that had blossomed became so sad that they went back into the ground. Oh, I feel so sad. I don't feel like dressing up with my leaves today. Yes, without the children, even I don't want to come out. I wish the giant had never returned. Who will I sing for in this empty garden? I am leaving. As time went by, winters came and passed. When spring came, it was lush green everywhere. The roadsides were filled with colourful flowers and green trees. Everyone wondered how the garden must look too. But with all the sadness present in the garden, spring did not come to it. The garden remained frozen. The only ones happy in the garden were snow and frost. With no spring to melt them, they became the masters of the garden. 
I will cover every tree of this garden so that it looks white. And so it went and covered every tree till all one could see was white. I am going to invite the north wind to join us here. The icy cold wind swept over the garden. It knocked the chimney pots off the castle and rattled its roof. Then the naughty wind had another idea. My friends, let's invite hail over too and claim this garden as ours forever. Soon hail came down on the garden. All four of them got together and caused havoc. Hail and wind attacked the castle roof every day and took off its slates one by one. One day, while the giant was lying in his bed, he heard beautiful music come in from his bedroom window. He thought perhaps the king's musicians were passing the garden. He looked out of his window and saw that a small bird was sitting on the window ledge and singing. Has spring finally arrived? He looked beyond into the garden. The icy wind had stopped blowing. The snow was melting and frost was vanishing. Hail couldn't be seen anywhere. Instead, he saw the most beautiful sight. The children have broken into the garden. Some children had found a hole in the wall and had entered the garden from there. They were on every tree and were happily sprawling on the grass. The trees were so happy that they covered themselves with green leaves. The flowers also came out and the grass was smiling gleefully. Even the birds were chirping new happy tunes. What I did was terrible. I was selfish. I should have never ever blocked the children out of the garden. I will go and correct my mistake now. The giant went out and broke the wall down. From now on, this garden is your playground forever. The children were so happy that they hugged the giant. From then on, the giant played with the children every day. As time passed, the giant grew very old and tired. He wouldn't go out to play with the children. He would only watch them from his window. One day, he saw a little boy crying. So he went to see him. What is the matter, little boy? The boy's hands were bleeding. This made the giant very angry. Who has hurt you? Tell me his name and I will punish him. The little boy calmed the giant and said, Calm down, my friend. These are wounds of love. Then the boy took the giant's hand and took him to the garden of paradise with him. After some time, the other children came to where the little boy had been. 
They found the giant lying on the grass and covered with white flowers. He had died with a loving smile on his face. I really was being the selfish giant, Tia. I am so sorry. Yes, you were. I will change that immediately. Here, please have some chocolates, Tia. Thank you, Tofu. I am happy that you have changed. But it is dinner time already. I will now have the chocolates for dessert. Hey, there you are. Hey, Tofu, wait up. What's wrong with you? I have been waiting for you for so long and here you are just walking past me without even saying hi? Mm, I'm sorry, Tia. I didn't mean to be rude to you. Sometimes I just can't understand my friends. Okay, calm down and tell me what happened. You know my friend Megan? Yes, the shy one with the curly hair, right? The one who's always helping you out with class notes and assignments. Yes. Isn't she wonderful? I think you should also help her out sometimes. Well, that's just what I did, Tia. And she is so upset with me now. She forgot her English assignment at home. So I did some of it for her and asked her to complete it and submit it. That's it. She got so offended. She hasn't said a word to me since then. And she won't answer me if I say something to her. Oh, that's strange. But I don't think she is the only one who is uncomfortable with people try to help. Uh, what do you mean? Let me tell you the story of the shoemaker and the elves. Once upon a time, there lived an old shoemaker. He was an honest man, but with very limited money. He made really nice shoes, but could not earn enough for himself and his wife. One night, he was in his workshop when his wife came to him. What are you doing, dear? I have this last piece of leather left. I am just cutting it out. We'll make a pair of shoes out of it tomorrow. Is it the last piece? What will we do? There are no grains in the cupboard, no wood for the fire, and now no more leather. Don't worry, my darling. Something will work out. The old couple finished their housework and before they went to sleep, the shoemaker put the leather on his workbench. The next morning, he got up early to make a pair of shoes out of the leather he had kept. To his surprise, instead of the leather, there lay a beautiful pair of shoes. He picked them up and observed them closely. They were made out of the same leather that he had put out the night before. He called his wife. Dear, 
Dear, come see this. What a lovely pair of shoes. They are just perfect. Yes. Look at the stitches. They are so tiny and spaced so perfectly. But I didn't make them. You didn't? Then who did? I don't know. Why would someone help us like this? I can't even think of anyone who can make such good shoes. You make the best shoes I have ever seen and these are better than yours too. I agree. Anyway, let us not get carried away. Let us put them in the display window and hope that we can get some money for them. Just a few minutes after the shoemaker had put the shoes on the display, a wealthy merchant stopped outside his door. He paid a good sum for the shoes and bought them. The shoemaker was very happy. He went and bought food for the house. With the remaining money, he bought two pieces of leather. When it was night, his wife called out to him. What are you doing? It's time for us to sleep. Yes, dear. I am just cutting out these leather pieces so I can stitch them into shoes tomorrow. The next morning, when the shoemaker and his wife came down to the workshop, they were surprised to see two new pairs of shoes on the table where he had kept the leather pieces. Would you look at that? These shoes are even more beautiful than the first pair. Let me put them up for sale and thank whoever is helping us out. Soon after, the shoemaker had put up the two pairs of shoes for sale, other wealthy men of the town came and bought them. They paid a hefty price for them. The shoemaker bought more food supplies and leather from the money he got. Again that night, he cut the leather and kept it to stitch it in the morning. The next morning, he saw that the leather had been made into shoes again. And as soon as he put them up for sale, they were bought in exchange of good money. This went on for many days. The shoemaker started doing well. His business prospered and his shop would always be full with customers. One night, as they were closing the shop, the shoemaker had an idea. I cannot stop thinking about those who help us. Why don't we hide behind the cupboard tonight and see who it is? Yes! That's a brilliant idea. Let's hide and check out. After some time, they saw two elves enter the workshop through the crack in the window. They headed to the workbench and started making shoes from the leather kept there. Although they were making these lovely shoes for the shoemaker, they had no shoes on. They wore torn shirts and very thin tights.
They did their work carefully. And left through the window again. Oh dear goodness! Such kind elves they are. We must repay them. Yes. When you go to the market tomorrow, get me some nice cloth. I will make clothes for our little helpers. The next day, the shoemaker got many fancy cloths and good leather. While his wife made beautiful clothes for the elves, he made soft shoes for them. When night fell, they placed the gifts for the elves on the table. They also laid out delicious food and treats for them. Then they hid behind the cupboard again and waited for the elves to return. When the elves came, they were overjoyed to see the gifts and the delicious food. They wore their new clothes It's stomach full. And went on to make shoes for the shoemaker. Once they were done, they slipped out of the window. I am so happy to see our little helpers happy. Yes, and they looked so wonderful in their new clothes, didn't they? Tonight let's keep some more dinner ready for them. What do you think? Yes, dear. That night, the shoemaker and his wife again kept dinner for the elves. But tonight, they did not hide behind the cupboard. Instead, they went to sleep. The next morning, when they came to the workshop, the shoemaker and his wife were disappointed to see that the dinner plates remained untouched. Even the leather that the shoemaker had cut out and put on the table remained as it is. I wonder what happened to them. Mm, maybe they will come tonight? Yes, let's hope so. The shoemaker and his wife again kept the food for the elves but were disappointed in the morning as the elves did not show up in the night. They waited for the elves many nights but they never returned. Do you think they overheard us? Perhaps they did. Elves are very shy creatures. They usually like to be left alone. What will happen to the shop now? Oh, it will be fine. I will miss my little helpers, but I will manage. The shoemaker went back to making the shoes himself. His shop continued to prosper. But he and his wife always remembered the elves and remained thankful to them for their help. So you see Tofu, some people are willing to help but are too shy to take help from others. Yes, Tia, I understand now. Also, it doesn't mean that you have to be angry with them. You can be thankful to them in your heart. Thank you, Tia. If you wouldn't have shared this with me, I think I would have lost a very good friend. 
Now when Megan tells me she doesn't want my help, I will respect that more. Good to know that. Now let's go home. I am very hungry. I can't do it. Try tofu, you can. I can't. Anyways, it's too high for me and I'm too short. Listen, Tofu. I have a story for you. Would you want to hear it? Sure. The Sour Grapes Once in a forest, there lived a furry fox. He was wandering around the forest in search of food. I am so hungry. I need to eat something. The fox was passing a vineyard but he wasn't aware it was one. I am so hungry that I can't even see what that round thing is. He went a little ahead but stopped as he noticed the smell of the delicious grapes. Wow! There are so many grapes in this vineyard. My mouth is watering. The fox looked at the grapevine and drooled. The fox jumped up towards the grapes. But the grapes were too high for him. He tried and tried, but the effort was futile. He tried again, and this time he was about to touch them, but failed again. Oh, I am so tired. These grapes are too high. I can't reach them at any cost. He sat there and thought for a long time that how he can get those grapes. He suddenly got up and said to himself, Those grapes are probably sour. In fact, I don't like grapes. Why should I try so hard for them? The fox couldn't reach the grapes and hence escaped by making excuses. But his tummy kept growling of hunger and he had to go without eating anything. So Tofu, the fox had to go empty-handed because he just made an excuse. Always remember, you won't achieve your goals if you give up by making excuses. So let's go! and try again.
What are you trying to do, Tofu? I am trying to pluck mangoes from this tree, but the effort is going useless. That's because the mangoes are too far away and the stones are too heavy. Then what should I do, dear? I really want those mangoes. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there was a mama pig and three little pigs. One day, Mama Pig said to them, You are old enough to build your own houses. <laughs> the first pig built a house of straw. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. The second pig built his house with sticks, stronger than the first pig's house. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. The third pig built his house with bricks, stronger than the second pig's house. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of straw. The wolf knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and puffed. The house of straw fell down and the wolf ate up the first little pig. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of sticks. He knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and puffed and blew the house away. The house of sticks fell down and the wolf ate up the second little pig. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of bricks. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. The big bad wolf tried to huff and puff and blow the house down. But he couldn't. He kept trying for hours, but the house was very strong. He tried to enter through the chimney, but the clever third little pig boiled a big pot of water and kept it below the chimney. The wolf fell into it and died. <laughs> So, the way the third wise pig managed to escape from the wolf without using weapons, but through his wisdom, would you be able to do the same? For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.